Tonight we'll be in, in 2 Corinthians. And you know, the first song we say, sang, so let us labor for the master. And uh, it's kind of what the message is tonight that God's put on. It's uh, being workers together with the master and being in all things commendable or honorable and uh, having merit and worth. The stance, what that means, um, we don't use commendable a whole lot anymore. But we do talk about things of value and things of worth. And we're to be creatures, or I guess I, maybe, well, we are creatures. We're created by the Creator. We ought to be creatures having worth and merit and value, being found honorable and approved for the Master's service. Amen. So, uh, let's pray one more time and we'll look into God's Word. Father, again, just thank you for the opportunity uh, to preach your Word tonight. And Father, I just pray you'd speak through me uh, again as already has been asked. Lord, just clear my mind of any distractions. And there's plenty of things in the world going on that can infiltrate the mind. So Lord, I just pray for clarity tonight. And give you the glory in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I do want to prelude this with 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, but we will be in chapter 6, 1 through 10, and I didn't give that to them. Um, so if you have your Bibles, please open up 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we'll look at 14 and 15 real quick. This, uh, again, just preludes, because chapter 5 leads into chapter 6, and uh, chapter 5 ends with the discussion of uh, uh, Christ reconciling us to God uh, by grace through faith. And 5 and 14, the Bible says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. And the rest of those verses continue on in that same thought. Uh, but it's interesting to see that it says the love of Christ constraineth us, and you could easily translate, to me, translate that to me, holds us together. Or He keeps us, or He compels us, and all those fit. And understanding that it's Christ's love and what He's done for us that holds us and keeps us. And the wonderful thought about that is we don't have to keep ourselves. God keeps us. And because He keeps us and what Christ has done keeps us, and because He holds it together, it should compel us to go and tell others about Jesus and bring them in. And he said, because Christ died for all, for all have sinned, then all who believe are dead to sin. Because Christ died for all, then all who believe are dead to sin. And because he rose again, all those believe are no longer to live for sin and self, but rather for him who died for us. And that is the whole thought process going into what chapter 6 is talking about. As Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. Remember the Corinthian church was filled with problems and troubles and um, a lot of idolatry and, uh, well, probably a whole lot of things that the church today faces. If you wanted to go find a church that was like the church today all over the world, you'd go no further than Corinthians and, and you can find all the problems that a church could have. They dealt with it. And so it was an answer to everything that the church faces and it's found in Jesus Christ. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he begins by saying, We then, we then, then what? Those who have been born again, those who are constrained and held together by Christ, because we're compelled to do things for what Christ has done for, we then, as workers together with Him, with who? Christ. Beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. And it's wonderful when you look at that verse and he says, We then, as workers together with Him. We're not called to do the work of Christ on our own or the work of God on our own. We're co-workers with Christ. Amen. He gives us the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit goes with you. You know, we were singing that song that uh, this is holy ground. And if we stop and think about it, because the Holy Spirit indwells us everywhere we step, is holy ground. Amen. There's not a place you go that is not holy because Christ is within you. And the Holy Spirit was living within you, leading and guiding you. And so there ought to be something to enter your mind. Side note, as you go somewhere that you're bringing Jesus or you're bringing the Holy Spirit wherever you're entering into, be careful where your feet go. <laughs> that song we teach the kids when they're little, oh, be careful, little feet where you go. 
just popped in my head. <laughs> Careful little feet where you go. Careful little hands what you do, holy hands. That has nothing to do with the message except that we are God's and he is within us and we're co-workers with Christ and uh, we're to go out and do the mission that God has called us to do. He said, beseech you that you uh, receive not the grace of God in vain. And that doesn't mean that you can receive the grace of God and then lose it. But what he's saying is when you have the grace of God and that grace was by faith, in other words, salvation, don't receive salvation in vain. Don't let your salvation be empty. Amen. Do something with it. God saved you to do something. That's why we're co-workers. That's why we're fellow workers with, with Christ and with the Holy Spirit to go out that we might tell us about Christ. He's gave us that mission. We're reconciled to God so that we can be on a mission with Christ and to share Christ. He says, don't let your salvation be in vain. And don't get saved and just sit on the pew. Don't get saved and just be on the sidelines waiting for the coach to say, hey, it's your turn. Come on in. Get out there in the game and look for the opportunity that God puts before you. Why? Well, because of verse 2. He says, For he saith, I heard thee, and time accepted, in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. There's an urgency because of uh, time's not going to continue on and on forever for people to come to know Christ as their Savior. There's, a, there's an end that's coming. And now is the time of salvation. We can't wait for tomorrow to tell others. We can't wait for another day. We're compelled to go forth and share the love of Christ now. Because now is the accepted time. This is the time that God has set to uh, allow the message of the gospel to go forward. And this is the time that he has set to allow his church to bring forth that message. To use you and I as ministers of the gospel to go out and proclaim the message. This is the time. Now is the day of salvation. we got to go. It's got to be declared. He said because of that, in verse 3, Give no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Because Christ constrains us, he holds together and compels us. And because now is the time for salvation, and because we're working together with God, he says, give no offense in anything that the ministry might not be blamed. I might have said that backwards, that the ministry be, blamed, be not blamed. In other words, he's saying, live holy. Live holy in all things. Wherever you go, wherever you do, like I said a while ago with our feet, wherever we go is holy ground. We're to live holy. Why? So that the ministry is not blamed. We don't want to give offense to the ministry. If we as proclaiming Christians and we're telling the world that we're believers and we behave in a manner that is contrary to God, who does that shame? Well, ourselves a little bit, but it shames the name of Christ. It puts a black eye on what the message is supposed to be doing. And that's not to say we're perfect, and God knows we're not perfect, and that's why he gives us the Holy Spirit to live within us, and that's why he also said that if you're faithful and just to confess your sins, that he's faithful, or if you're faithful to confess, hmm, I got that all backwards. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There we go. Now we got it. That's God's promise. We confess our sins, he'll cleanse us. That's not a one-time thing. Thank God. Because he knows we'll mess up and make mistakes. But what he's saying, we should be living in a way that, uh, that is holy and honorable. And you know what? When we confess our sins and we ask forgiveness, that's part of living holy. And when we offer forgiveness to others, that's part of being holy. And we offer the love of Christ to others, that's part of being holy. And when we worship together, that's part of being holy. And when we go out and we're worshiping on our own in front of others, that's all part of being holy. And when we honor God and we praise His name, and when we walk about singing songs and psalms and letting the joy of the Lord come from us, that's all part of living holy. And we're choosing to do the right thing instead of the wrong thing. Even when we're tempted to do the wrong thing, yet we do the right thing. That's part of being holy. He said, give no offense. That way the ministry can't be blamed. That way the church can't be blamed. More importantly, that way God doesn't get the bad reputation. Well, if that's what a Christian like, I don't want them to do that. I don't want to be part of that. I know a Christian and they did this. I don't want nothing to do with that. 
And yet how many times are we the reason that people don't want to hear the gospel? Oh, ultimately they have to give testimony for themselves. But I sure hate to be the reason somebody is angry at God. And I'm sure it's probably happened some way, some, some time or another. I probably said something or done something. Messed up. It happens. And we confess our sin. And if we know it happens, we have to ask for forgiveness. We don't want to be a bad reflection on God to the world. We don't want to be a bad reflection on other Christians because we don't get our things straight because we're not living holy and walking holy. We don't want to give any offense whatsoever. So be careful feet where you go. Be careful hands what you do. I guess that was part of the message. Be careful eyes what you see. Be careful ears what you hear. Be careful tongue what you say. I don't know if that's part of the song or not. If not, it ought to be. You got to be careful what we say. Now, it's easy to let that tongue pop off and say all kind of things that can easily destroy other folks. In fact, Scripture warns us that the tongue is unruly. <laughs> so you can move about great ships with a little rudder, and so does that tongue. That little old tongue can cause so much damage. Uh, we got to live holy and be careful that we don't cause a black eye upon Christianity. In verse 4, he said, in all things approving, and this is where I got the title, in all things commendable. He said, in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience and afflictions and necessities and distresses. And that word commendable, again, means having worth or the, that approving. But in all things approving or in all things having worth and merit and valuable or in all things being honorable as the ministers of God in much patience. You know, we're to be found honorable in everything we do. We'll be found worthy in everything we do, whether it's in public, whether it's in private, wherever, whether it's in thought. Ouch, that's a tough one. How about for you, but for me anyway. Sometimes thoughts run wild. And yet we're to be, in all things, approving as the minister of God. That means even our thoughts, we can't get away with ungodly thoughts. And thank God we can go back to that verse. If we confess our sins, he's faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't forget it just in there. And I'm so grateful that even when the thoughts come in that aren't so good, I can say, God, forgive me. And he forgives. But he said, in much patience... He said, we got to be found worthy or we got to uh, be found of value or be found of honorable and much patience. That means long periods of enduring. He didn't say a little patience. He said much patience in those times of long enduring. And we face a lot of things that come against us, a lot of trials, a lot of troubles, and we're to be patient. There's a lot of folks that come against us. There's diseases and uh, temptations and all kind of things that come at us and we're to endure. And remember Romans 5, verses 3 through 5, it talks about patience, working experience. Our patience gives us character. When we endure those things, when we have patience and endure, God's building character in us. He's given us the uh, things that we need that we might be able to minister to others around us who may go through the same stuff or may be going through the same things. He's given us the character we need as a minister of God. And he said in afflictions, not only in, the, in much patience, but in afflictions. The burdens and the persecutions, the pressures of life that come our way when those afflictions come. We're to be found worthy and honorable in those. When necessities come, when there's time where we face a need and we might be tempted to do something in a way that doesn't honor God, we're to be found honorable in those times. We're to be found worthy in those times. He said in times of distresses, and again, when the things of life just come in and attack and attack and attack and you're weighed down and burdened, he said in those distresses, be found worthy. And honorable. Now, let me tell you something about distress. When I, when I was reading this, I got to thinking about my, my little brother's got a table he made for his wife. And his gorgeous table. But in it, there's where it looks like a screw had been laid 
and pressed in and taken out and nuts and bolts and other things. And I asked my brother, I said, what is that? It's called distressing. We actually take the wood and he pounded things into it. It's exactly what he did. He took a screw in and he hit it in and it got the outprint, uh, outline of the screws and the nuts and other things that he did. He distressed it. Something came against that table and changed it from what it was. And then he finished it and covered it in a clear coat, a polyurethane, I guess. I'm not a woodworker. I don't know all the exact things. But all I know now is when you look at it, even with all its distresses and all the things that it went through to get where it is, it is the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen as far as a table goes. And I got to thinking about how God takes us. And when we're going through the things of life and we're pounding and, and we're beat up on and, and we're going through those and we're, we're being distressed. And yet God comes in with his clear coat and he makes something beautiful out of those situations. I said, wow, thank you, Lord, for that illustration to understand distress. And he said, in stripes in prison, and if we're to be beaten, if we're to be cast in prison, and as Americans, you know, we haven't really had to face this too much, but Paul experienced it. He knew exactly what he was talking about in the beatings and the stripes that he took in the prison time he was in. But in every time that he faced those, he was found faithful and honorable. And if it comes to that point where we face those things, we're to be found faithful and honorable and worthy. He said in tumults, times of disorder or confusion, you ever have something in your life just throw you out of whack? Something just come up on you all of a sudden, you're like, oh my goodness, what do I do? I'm confused. I don't understand. This is not normal. He said in those times, Remain worthy, remain honorable. In those times of labor, he said, whenever you've been working, you just get tired and you're weary. Remain honorable. You know, it's in those times when we get tired that sometimes that's the time Satan shows up and tries to bring in temptations. He knows when we're weak. And he'll come in. We might just be exhausted. And he'll come in. And in those moments, a lot of times that comes in at night. It's been a long day. And maybe there's a temptation to get on things on the internet you're not supposed to be getting on. Maybe it's then when those thoughts come in your mind that should never be there. In those times in labor that you become weary, remain honorable. He said in watchings, that's the times that cause us to lose sleep. You ever try to lay down at night and there's just so many things on your mind and you can't get to sleep. Or maybe there's something that's burdened you so much that sleep just can't be found. And a lot of times that leads to the labors, the weariness as well. He said, in those times, remain honorable, remain worthy, remain holy. Keep looking to me, keep coming to me, keep coming and seeking my strength is what he's saying. And he said, in times of fastings, that's those times that we do without. Many times it's when we may choose to do without. You know, Christ was 40 days tempt, uh, in the wilderness praying, then tempted. He was fasting. And it's those times when we're choosing to do without and an opportunity to worship God that those temptations may come in as well. We're to remain honorable. If we choose a time of fasting, we're to stick to it. You know, we've been doing these fasting and prayers. And the only person that set the limitation on what your fast is has been you and God. And when you've chosen and, and made up in your mind, all right, God, this is what I'm fasting from, it's during that time during the day that you have to remain faithful to what you said you would do. Remain honorable. If you chose not to eat that day or for a certain period of time, maybe you'll skip lunch. But whatever it may be, if you chose to stay off your phone, stay off the internet, maybe if you chose to stay off the social media, only use the phone if it's a call, whatever it is, those times of fasting, remain faithful, honorable to the Lord. Temptations are going to come, it's going to rise. And you can bank on it. Jesus told us that there would be trials and tribulations in our life. 
But no matter what we face as Christians, we're to be honorable. So we're to resist the temptation to give in. We're to resist the temptation to fall to sin. We're to resist the temptation of the enemy by drawing nigh to God. Remember Scripture said, draw nigh to God and Satan will flee. Are you feeling over, overly tempted? Then just get a little closer to God. You feel a little more under attack, just get a little closer to God. He said, how do, we, how do we do all these things? And all those things that come, how do we do that? And Paul didn't leave us with questions. He said, do it this way. You want to remain honorable in all these situations. You want to remain worthy of value by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, and by kindness. Uh, do those, those four kind of sound familiar? Uh, familiar with the fruit of the Spirit. And there's a few more that go in there with it, but those four are mentioned. He said you can remain honorable when the fruit of the Spirit is on display in your life. Pureness, being pure in thought and motives and action, being blameless and clean and having knowledge, learning of God and learning the Scriptures. Being long-suffering. Just take it and take it and take it and take it. And being kind. And he said, by the Holy Ghost. The fruit of the Spirit are not possible without the Spirit. <laughs> and so God's given us the Spirit to give us the strength, to give us all those things that we need, that we might remain commendable, that we might remain honorable before Him. And then he said, love unfeigned. And he says, what he means there is to be sincere and without hypocrisy. You say you love people, are you showing it? You say you love God, are you showing it? Is it just in words or deeds backing it up? Is the thoughts within our minds and the, the thoughts of our heart reflecting the things that we say? Or are we filled with hypocrisy? Love unfeigned. Being genuine in our love towards others. One of the greatest things we can do to show that we love others is to let them know what Jesus has done for them. It may not always be received, but it needs to always be given. When we talk to people, they need to know that we're genuine in what we're thinking and what we're saying. They know. People know when they're loved or when they're being merely tolerated. Even kids. Kids know more than anybody. They know when they're loved and when they're just being tolerated. They're not fools. And, uh, but we're all the same way. We know. We need to be genuine in our love for others. And he said, do it by the word of truth, which is God's truth, by Jesus. You can uh, overcome all those things that are to get and remain honorable and faithful by his word, by Jesus, by the power of God, relying on God's strength and his power and by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and the left. And when I read that, I immediately thought about uh, the armor of God, but it's not what he's talking about here. He said, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and the left hand. If you think about that soldier on his right hand, he would have the sword and on his left hand would be the shield. <laughs> and he said, God's righteousness will help you on the offense and on the defense. I said, man, that's cool. By the armor of his righteousness, though. It's not our righteousness. This is God's righteousness. God gives us the strength and the ability to do all these things through him. And he continues on and he says, By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true. There are some folks out there that are for you. There's others that are against you. But no matter what, we're to stand firm in Christ. No matter what comes our way, we remain honorable in how we're living. We're to be holy because God's holy. There's no excuse or no reason to ever not be. And if in a moment you find yourself not, go to God and ask him for forgiveness. And then get back in that right standing with the Lord. Why? Because today is this day of salvation. And for somebody, it's important that you're living holy and walking holy, that they might see Christ.